very warm welcome, and it's good to share this uh, right across the team to the as it were, Western churches, Buckland Ripers, and the like, uh, and also uh, across uh, to uh, as far as Hotel. And it's very good to have you with us. We're going to begin with a hymn of praise, uh, and uh, we can't sing with our voices, but we can certainly sing with our hearts. And it's a hymn about uh, God's calling to us. Uh, I, the Lord of sea and sky.
these uh, fantastic recordings that we can share, but uh, heartfelt seems a good word, and of course that spoke about God holding us in his heart, and it spoke about feasting with bread and wine, the eternal symbols that remind us of his costly love. We begin by remembering that God is here, his spirit is with us, and some comfortable words. Hear the words of comfort that our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear what St Paul says. This saying is true and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And hear also what St. John says. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation of our sins. We thought about the gift of forgiveness, and we now come formally to make that, uh, uh, receive that offer of forgiveness as we own up to those faults in our own lives, those disappointments. So come, let's return to the Lord God and say, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like the morning crack, the, the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, and bind up our wounds and revive us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I don't know about the mist that goes away early, but I'm misting up uh, with the uh, little visor here. But nevertheless, the important thing is to receive God's blessing and forgiveness. So may the God of love bring us back to himself and forgive us our sins, assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we hear the Gospel reading for today. And hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to him Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then the cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved, listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen, until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Christ our Lord. Father, may these spoken words be faithful to the written word and lead us to the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our theme this month is hope. And I am delighted that we can see the days lengthening and we have lighter evenings. It gives me hope that there might be another good summer on the way. And in the Middle Ages, they believed that all the birds chose their mates in the middle of February, St. Valentine's Day today. And that simply happened to fall at the right time of year to provide an excuse for amorous happenings. No one is at all sure which Valentine the day is dedicated to. It was a popular name in Rome and there are at least three St. Valentines mentioned in the 5th century papers listing Roman saints. But it is a sign of how important celebrating love is for many people, that the feast has continued to be celebrated for many hundreds of years. And we might know nothing about St. Valentine, but I hope we all know something about love and know it is something to celebrate. And we heard in the Gospel reading today the Father's voice saying, This is my beloved Son. 
Jesus had gone up Mount Tabor to pray and taken Peter, James and John with him. And just before the story of the Transfiguration, Peter had confessed Jesus as the Christ or Messiah. But maybe Jesus does not want him or the other disciples to get too comfortable with such an idea. There, as he prays, Jesus' face and clothing become dazzling white, and he speaks to Moses and Elijah, the prophets of the Old Testament. And to confess Jesus as the Christ means more than words. Jesus wants Peter to see what that means. It means that Jesus shines with the radiance of God's glory. And Mark's Gospel describes Christ's transfigured clothes as brighter than anyone can wash them. And when we set out in faith, we never fully know the greatness of what is being revealed to us. And the icons of the Transfiguration story show the three disciples on their hands and knees, cowering, crawling away and covering their faces. It's an act of God and they stood on holy ground. They were being changed and that change frightened them. The disciples were literally struck down by the impact of what they were a part of and they were dumbstruck, silent. Peter says something daft about building three booths because he did not know what to say. And the radiance of Jesus shone like the sun and the appearance of the prophets and the voice proclaiming Jesus as God's son and beloved. It was all too much. And the challenge to us is also to listen, to be silent and know that there are those times when we encounter the Holy, the very presence of God. God is here with us, gently changing us. There was another reading in the lectionary which was from 2 Kings, chapter 2, verse 1 to 12, and it's quite a strange story. It's about Elijah knowing that he will die soon and his assistant Elisa won't leave him alone. He said, I will not leave you, but Elijah tries to shake him off. And they go to Bethel, and a lot of prophets arrive, and they say, oh, you know, Elijah is going to be taken away from you today. And Elijah says, yes, I know, keep silent. And then they go to Jericho, and again, the whole company of prophets arrive and say, your master will be taken away from you today. And he says, yes, I know, just keep silent. And after the revelation of his glory, Jesus went straight to the scene of suffering. A cameo of the millions of such incidents of suffering in our world. Some beyond human control, others unfortunately the result of human action. So it seems fitting to end the season with light, a light so bright that no one on earth can produce it. A flash of brilliant, blinding revelation that illuminates not only who Jesus is, but also Jesus' mysterious words about his coming suffering, death and rising again. And on the threshold of Lent, we are called to become more and more like Christ. Lent is a time to take stock as we focus on discipleship in a world of suffering. And that suffering this year seems overwhelmingly close to us. We are all very aware that the whole world is suffering through this pandemic and all of us are affected in some way or another. But we have this hope of Emmanuel with us, God with us, and he will never leave us. And we start Lent against this backdrop of the veiled glory of God and with the assured Easter message of hope, the resurrection, ascension and our transformation into his likeness from glory to glory. Amen. Amen. And let us pray.
Lord, you are our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in times of trouble. Help us when hope seems lost, to keep our eyes fixed on you. And we pray for all who labour to spread the good news, especially those who face threatening behaviour or persecution. And for those who are tempted to remain silent in order to avoid danger to themselves or their families, that they may be given your courage and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all the injustice, cruelty and oppression of our world, in co its confusion of priorities, its lost opportunities and misdirected zeal, that we may be guided unceasingly by the level-headed, compassionate leadership of God's Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our families, friends and neighbours, for the very young and the very old in our care, for wisdom to see opportunities of Christ's love, and for enough energy and time to do what God needs us to do. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And we pray for all who are wounded and injured, those in hospital and all in pain, that they may find Christ among them in their suffering. And we pray for those who inflict pain on others, for terrorists, murderers and all who are fired with hatred, that their lives may be transformed by encountering Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those on the verge of death and those who have passed into eternity. May they rest in peace forever. And we give you thanks for all your care and healing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks very much, Arthur. I think uh, you could speak on uh, St. Valentine far better than I possibly could, so uh, perhaps that's a sexist comment, but it's true as well. So it's really good to share together as well, and uh, thanks to all those who are doing the recording and editing and uh, music all sorts as well. Uh, talking of music, uh, we will be receiving uh, communion uh, during a Teze chant about uh, Jesus is uh, the light that shines around us. Uh, but for the moment, if you're not ready at home, you might want to pause, just get uh, symbols of bread and wine as we come to celebrate together. Those of you who are uh, at a distance uh, helping with recording, uh, uh, you might like to take uh, the communion out of your envelope and uh, hold it in your palm of your hand uh, as we join together and support each other. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus your Son to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and light, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. 
This is our soul, O summer in the heights. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my blood, blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This, this is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. To find death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Our song in the highest. Send your Holy Spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing, Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. In our sister churches across the Ridgeway team, each has its own character, its personality as it were. But of course we have a huge amount in common and with the saints down through the ages in this place and all our sister churches, we join with them as we say this holy prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Yeah. Though we are many, yeah. we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Sometimes in communion, it comes a point, as it were, we feel we have to receive at that particular moment. Uh, this piece of music is about three minutes long, so you receive it at the right time for you, the Taze chant, Jesus your light is shining.
speaks about going on our journey, going home, uh, uh, to encourage us as we share our faith. Remember that we might be physically distanced, but we're certainly not socially distanced, and communion knows no bounds at all. So we do share in this love of God that we celebrate here in Bread and Wine. So may God bless you and keep you, and make his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you, and give you his peace his strength, his wisdom, his love and his laughter, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen. <laughs>